welcome to Wednesday Healing Session here at Victory Life Centre. I have Pastor Barbara Oldfield and Graham Guest, a clinical psychologist who got his degree from UWA and Murdoch here in Perth, Western Australia. It's so exciting to have you here with mm. us. Thank you. Now, Graham's going to be sharing a bit about his testimony, how he came to the Lord, how it, it affected his family, but also what he's doing today. I know he teach, you teach in our Bible college as well. Mm -hmm. You teach chaplaincy, and I know everyone that attends your course absolutely loves it. <laughs> Oh, so how fine. did you first come to the <clears throat> Lord and tell us a little bit about your experience? Well, um, it all started in 2007 and um, I met up with a colleague and um, when this colleague came to see me, she was shaking and her eyes were this big and um, she was telling me that she was tormented by demons and I'm thinking, she's nuts. <laughs> but I actually knew her. And I actually knew that she wasn't nuts. And so it really, really disturbed me. Anyway, good friend that I was, I didn't want anything more to do with her. And so... Um, I said you were a smart <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so what happened? So we'll call her Carol. Um, so Carol, uh, after that, I didn't see Carol anymore. And I remember when I got home that night, um, my wife said to me, what's wrong with you? And I said, oh, I don't want to talk about it. It really destabilised me. Shook you. Uh... Shook me. Um, anyhow, fast forward six months, um, and um, I had the worst headache I'd ever had when I was at work. And I never, I never ever go home from work. I'm always at work. And uh, this day, I, I just couldn't. My head was just so bad. Anyway, I went home, and my wife said, you look like death and I felt like death and uh, anyway so I dosed myself up with pills and I went to bed. Anyway at 12 o'clock that night um, this is very emotional for me because it really um, this whole story is just in some ways it's an incredibly painful thing but in other ways it's a beautiful thing because God met me where I was at. She came in at 12 o'clock and uh, she said to me, are you awake? And I said, yes. And she said, oh, I need to talk to you about something. Yeah, okay. And she said, oh, your brother has just been diagnosed with melanoma that had metastasized and had spread through his body. It spread everywhere through his body, through into his back, into his neck, into his brain, everywhere. And... Um, Basically, every doctor that he went to see said, Greg, you're going to die. And um, it was just, it turned our family upside down. It was just mm. horrific. And um, I should mention that at this time, I, I don't know if I'd describe myself as, as an atheist, but, you know, if someone came into my office and they said they were Christian, I'd pat them on the head and say, well, you know, Good if you, if, if yeah. you want to believe in a, a nice fairy man in the sky, <laughs> that's fine by me, you know, I'll just have another glass of red wine and I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. That was where I was at. That yeah. was about as spiritual as I got. Anyway, um, so all this happened and everywhere that we turned to, there was nothing. There was no hope. Anyway, um, my wife's good friend, her mother, actually used to babysit for your mum. <laughs> and um, she was talking to my wife one day and was saying, look, there's healing rooms here, you know, and God can heal people. And um, so she told my wife and my wife told me. And um, in the meantime, my father had rang me and my dad is a mechanic and my older brother's a mechanic. My younger brother, who passed away from the melanoma, he's a mechanic, and my um, sister's a farmer's wife. So I'm the dropout of the family. <laughs> you know, I went to university. university. So my dad rings me up and says, Graham, you've got to do something. You've got to do something for your brother. And so, you know, I had this message about healing rooms, and I, I checked on the internet, and there's a thing called the Australian Clinical Trials Register, which, you know, um, talks about all the experimental drugs that they have because with melanoma it's all experimental and nothing works, nothing works. And so there was nothing. And even some of these experimental drugs, they wouldn't take my brother anyway because he no. was too far gone and it'd spoil their results. And that's not a criticism yeah. of the research thing. I mean, they have to do what they have to do. Anyhow, so my wife tells me this, um, gives me this information and that weekend, um, there was a feature article in the Weekend West about your mum and also about the healing rooms. 
And so, if I'm totally honest, I rang my dad and I told him about that to get him off my back. <laughs> I thought, well, I don't know what else to do. There's nothing else. And my dad's hassling me. I love my brother. Anyway, I said to my dad, so take him, take him to the healing rooms. Anyway, so my elderly mum and my elderly dad, <laughs> they take their gravely ill son and they come here. But it was um, school holidays. And so the healing rooms were actually closed on that day. Anyway, it just so happened that um, Pastor Jan Eastwood um, came by to pick up something from church and she heard this rattling at the front door, <laughs> which was my folks and my poor brother. Anyway, so um, she went down, she opened the door and she said, you know, can I help you? And my dad said, yes, we're looking for healing for my brother. Anyway, so she invited them in and um, unbeknownst to me, they all get born again. Yeah. So, you know, my brother's not passed away. He's alive. Hallelujah. Yeah. And um, anyway, so they get born again and then they started coming to church. And um, my wife, who's an angel, and my son, who's just awesome, they love my parents. And so they decided to come to church with them to support them yeah. in this, you know, really bad time. I didn't. I didn't come to church. Anyway, so they were coming to church. I'd stay at home. And um, one Sunday night, my wife said to me, would you no. take me to church? Mm. I said, no, I'm not going to church. <laughs> she said, okay. <laughs> guilt, 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 <laughs> guilt. Feeling really guilty. So I'm thinking, okay, come on, I'll take you to church. Yeah, really. So anyway, so this is the, fir the first time I came to Victory. People were shaking your hand and they all had big smiles on their faces. And, you know, I walk into the auditorium, there's a rock band on stage and you know, everyone's waving their arms around. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> what a bunch of losers this mob are. That's what I honestly thought. I honestly thought that. Anyway, so I sat down, then Pastor Margaret got up and she started talking about a prayer tower. And I'm thinking, what a waste of money that'd be. And uh, then she introduces this doctor, um, a medical doctor. Dr. Lynn. Dr. Philip Lynn. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, a doctor. Well, I'll listen to this bloke because, you know, oh, he, well, that's, oh, that's where I get my referrals from. Like, yeah. doctors are smart people. So <laughs> I listen to a smart person. Anyway, so he gets up on the stage and he starts giving this testimony about how his four-year-old daughter accidentally hung herself and died. Mm -hmm. And over 24 hours of constant prayer, where his whole church came together, yeah. filled the car park, filled the, filled the um, hallways of the hospital, she came back to life. Mm -hmm. Powerful testimony. Mm. And here I am, my brother's about to die, and he, he says this, and then he introduces his daughter in the audience, who was eight years old by this time, and she was just over to my left. And I looked over and he, sa and he said, oh, Sarah, her name's Sarah Lynn. If you want to look it up on the internet, the miracle of Sarah Lynn, it's definitely worth a look. Anyway, as she stands up, I look behind her and there was Carol, my um, former colleague who was, uh, you know... Supposedly demon-possessed. Demon-possessed <laughs> or whatever. Um, anyway, the service finished. My head, by this time, I, I, was, I was just freaked out, like... Anyway, so I went up to Carol afterwards. I said, what are you doing here? And she says, what are you doing here? And I said, no, I asked you first. <laughs> anyway, she gave me her testimony, which was basically that she had that de demonic oppression for a long time, for about 18 months. Anyway, cut a long story short, <clears throat> your mum told her to go to Bible college and she was in Bible college for about three weeks and after 18 months of absolute horror and torment, three weeks later, bang. Praise gone. the Lord. What By, an amazing yeah, testimony. Absolutely. And that, you know, like I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That and touched your life as well. Absolutely. It? Just totally sort of freaked me out. Well, it did. It, it was sort of it like... It would have shifted your heart. God it, would have been working on your there heart. There was all sorts of things. Anyway, so, you know, in my sort of business, you know, what you do, if you don't understand something, you buy a book. So I bought your mum's book, Winning Words. And um, so I read the book and it got to the last page, which was the... Um, the prayer. The, the prayer. Of salvation. So I thought, well, all right, I better do this, I guess. So anyway, I got down on my knees and I read out the prayer aloud. And I was waiting for the lightning to hit me, you know, <laughs> waiting for something to happen, but nothing happened. So I thought, I'll do it again. 
still no lightning. And I thought, well, I'll do it again. So I did it three times just to make sure. And I was waiting for the lightning or something, waiting for a change or something. Anyway, nothing happened. But the change did happen. Mm. There's no doubt. Yeah. The change again. happened. Mm. Yeah. And something happened. And, um, Born again from the inside oh, wow. out. Inside out. And all of a sudden, you know, I start, uh, you know, I was coming to church and things just whacked me. Wow. Like your mum. And the first time I heard your mum speak after this, you know, she said a scripture, Hosea 4, 6. My people, says the Lord, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I thought, I don't want to be destroyed. I saw my brother, you know, by this time he was very close to passing away. And I thought, I'm, I've got to do something about this. And my friend, colleague, Carol, said, you need to go to Bible college. So I thought, OK, I'll go to Bible college. And we'd been in Bible college for three months. And Philip Lynn came to um, minister to the Bible college students. And um, anyway, at morning tea, I went up to him and I said, it's your fault I'm here. <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know, I heard you give that testimony, you know, a number of months ago and whatever. And he says, Graham, there's something you don't understand. I said, oh, what's that, Philip? He said, that night when I came to Victory, I had no intention of preaching. I was purely visiting. I'd never even been to Victory before. And um, anyway, as I walked in through the door, James Chan recognised me. And as they were talking, your mum walked past and James introduced Philip to your mum and your mum says, oh, I've heard about you. You're the one whose daughter was raised from the dead. Would you please give your testimony tonight? Yeah. And my understanding is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but your mum's never given the pulpit to somebody she doesn't know, so either true. before that time or mm. after that time. You're right. And I've got the tape at home. And um, after Philip gave his testimony, he said, oh, Pastor Margaret, I've finished my testimony. Do you want the... Um, microphone back. She said, no, you stay there because the Holy Spirit wants you to stay there. You stay there. Yeah, that's right. And he kept talking and, and he preached. That's beautiful. And that was the night that you gave your heart to the Lord. God had it all lined up, didn't he? Amen. And, you know, like I, I absolutely believe he did all that for me. I'm sure he did it for lots of other people too. But And, and, and the beautiful story mm. with, I was with Pastor Jan and met your family and yeah. met your beautiful brother. Yeah. How amazing. And like you said, he may have lost the battle in the natural, but mm. he didn't lose the battle because he too gave his heart Amen. to Christ. He Amen. came to Christ Amen. through this. Yep. And we've always said, had he had more knowledge, you quoted the scripture, yep. my people are destroyed through a lack of knowledge. Mm. Mm. Had he had more knowledge and more time mm. to push through, a term, even though it was terminal, there was a place where had he known more, you know, Faith he comes by through, hearing. Yeah. He could have walked Amen. through. But the best news is he's in eternal life. Hallelujah. Yeah. And your dad, I met Don <laughs> Graham's dad sitting on a chair in the healing rooms. And I remember he was just sitting there. And I said, sir, what is the matter? And he said, it's my son. And he began to weep. And I had not met Greg or anything. And I said, your son is ill. And he said, yes. And he said this. I would gladly give my life for my son. Oh, wow. And mm. I said to him, that's exactly what Jesus did for us. And your dad and mum also came to the mm. Lord through what the Absolutely. enemy meant for evil in mm. your family. Mm. It worked against him because Greg is in eternal life. The whole, your dad, mum are in eternal life. And you, sir, are ministering mm. mightily to a whole a generation of people with the wrong mindset, mm. like you had one. Mm. And Absolutely. you're aware of that, aren't you? Yeah. That you're being oh, called. Look, you know, like Jesus said, know the truth and the truth sets you free. Yes. It's only the truth that yeah. sets you free. And, yes. you know, like there's a lot of good things in psychology. And one of the good things in psychology is a thing called cognitive behaviour therapy. Cognitive behaviour therapy more or less says that human beings have the capacity to think about the way that they think. And psychologists think they're really smart because they think they invented that. <laughs> but 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote, think on the good things, the pure yeah, things, pure. the things of good report. Yes. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. In other words, God has given us that capacity to be able to really um, examine and discern and question some of the things that are in our mind. And he 
promises us, you, you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, I think one of my friends was going through a divorce once and she went to a Christian psychologist and she goes, oh, I'm just amazing. It's made me so strong. I said, well, what did she do for you? And she said, well, she gave me a list of scriptures using cognitive therapy for yeah. me to confess to change my thinking. And I said, that's called renewing your mind. Amen. Yes. And, and you know, basically, if you're a Christian psychologist, mm. I'm presuming that's what you do too, is you could give Christians scriptures to renew their mind to the word of God, to help them overcome whatever they're going through, to help them overcome the situation and the circumstance. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, there's some one, I mean, you know, people have so many amazing challenges and, uh, you know, th there are times I think when, um, you know, people as they go through these challenges, they they experience like, well, where where's God in all this? Mm. And sometimes, you know, they they start to doubt um, that, you know, God is with them. He will never leave them nor forsake them, and so forth. And I think, you know, it, it's it's the scriptures, a and also. Um, you know, part of that relationship that you yeah. develop with the person. God loves relationship. Yeah. He loves us to relate to Him yeah. and He loves us mm. to relate to love each us. other. And as we relate to each other and we, you know, demonstrate love and patience and kindness, um, you know, and within that, we can really help to meet the person where they're at. Because yeah. that's what God did for me. Yeah. <laughs> he met... Yeah. He met me where I was at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm just forever grateful. I'm forever grateful to your mum. She heard from the Holy Spirit that night. And I'm forever grateful well, it's amazing. to God. Maybe if there was another preacher that night, your heart wouldn't have been so open. But it just happened to be a doctor. Of course. That yeah. night. And yes. God just, That's it. for whoever they're listening out there, God loves you and he will ordain mm. and line everything mm. up so he can reach into your world and beautiful? share his love with you and that's exactly Amen. what he did for you that's exactly that's what he did for me and you've been able to impact so many lives and help so many people and i know everyone <laughs> that knows you they all love graham they're yeah, like oh graham's just the, the the loveliest person you mm. know and uh, nice. you Thank are because you. you just you've got that compassion and that mercy gift mm. and People can know that when they come around you and when you're teaching them, it just sets mm. them free. And, you know, you're an amazing teacher too. You, you know, everyone loves your class on chaplaincy as well because it helps so many people and, you know, it just sets people free. So mm. it's, it's mm. powerful. Thank you. you. Be, before Christ, after Christ, mm. you said to me once, I now minister differently. Well, oh, when I yeah. say minister, yeah, yeah. you were a clinical psychologist, psychologist. Mm. Uh, administering the best way you could help to people mm. who came to you seeking assistance for their mental issues and mm. well life issues and I always remember you saying to me you look back and you said Lord not forgive me mm. but I didn't really give them the correct medicine for for oh, that sure. yes now today you can honestly say Mm. You have the correct pills these people need. Mm. And it's not a pill to sleep with or anything like that, but they are gospels. Mm. And if people take them, mm. it will set them free. Mm. It is the truth, isn't it? You said that. What's Absolutely. truth? The word of God is truth. And the truth will set you free. Because mm. I had a, a fellow today in healing school. His label is bipolar, schizophrenic. And personally, I do not believe he is any of those things. Mm. He has been told that in a medical capacity. But to see the hope came, and I said, Sir, if you apply the scriptures, if you take the medicine that God wants you to take, mm. you can walk through this mm. and have the mind of Christ. And he left quite seriously a different man in 20 mm. minutes. Even the people noticed. He came up to me and he said, Thank you for the hope you've given me. Mm. How precious that is, Graham. Amen. Oh. How precious that is. Mm. He came in a broken man, mm. and when he realized that if he applied and took God's word, he could trust him, mm. God would do what he said he would do. Mm. He will deliver you. He will set you free. You renew your mind. God will do that mm. part mm. and bring healing. Yeah. And that Amen. is such a, we, we are very blessed in this, in this mm. ministry, all of us. Mm to be able to help people because we truly can help them. Yeah. Mm. And there's no price tag on it. Yeah. <laughs> that you don't pay for this. Mm. Healing yeah. is free. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that amazing? It's yeah. beautiful. Well, Sue, 
our, you know, who does all our cleaning and does so much, hung, hang, hangs all our Christmas decorations. You know, that's what she was diagnosed with and now she's free. And I love John Mellor. He's one of our yeah. great healing evangelists. He was <coughs> diagnosed with that and now he goes around preaching the gospel yes. totally free. So nothing's impossible for our mm. God, as you know. Mm. You've probably seen many people healed through, you know, as they come and see you. You've given I've them had the miracles in my office. Like yeah. I had one woman with a frozen shoulder and she'd just given her heart to the Lord and she wasn't working. And um, the Holy Spirit said to me, tell her to go back to work. And I thought, okay. <laughs> so I said, the Holy Spirit's telling me that you should get a job, go back to work. And she said, well, I can't, I can't move my arm. I said, well, if the Holy Spirit wants you to go back to work, he's going to heal mm. your arm. Mm. I said, can I pray for you? Yeah, sure. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Bang, her arm went straight up. Oh, how cool is <laughs> And she that? went, whoa. Amen. And I went, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> we get a surprise. Oh, I got a wow. big surprise. I thought, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. And but there were other, there's been other things, other spiritual things as well, like mm. amazing things. I, it, that, you know, I mean, it would take me probably too long to, to talk about them, but just beautiful things where God just, you know, when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're obedient um, mm. and, you know, it's almost like in some ways a mindset to say, well, I know that God is with me. He's right here, right now. And I can't do anything without him. Jesus mm. said, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Yeah. You know, to bear fruit, you need that life-giving mm. essence that flows mm. through me into you. Yeah. Okay, I'm all up for that. You're right here and I'm right here and whatever you tell mm. me, I will do. And sometimes yeah, that is challenging. Let me yeah. give you the tip because, you know, sometimes... Again, it's a renewing of our mind too, mm. that we are his hands, his feet. Jesus is still setting people free. He's mm. still healing. He's still saving. He's doing exactly what he did when he walked the streets of Jerusalem. Mm. Yeah. He's mm. doing it. How's he doing it? Through his body. Yeah. Us, mm. the church. Yeah. And there's going to be more and more of it because mm. people, are, you know, this, this is not the best of times to be living in in many ways for a lot of people. The fear, the anxiety, the stress, all that's happening. But mm. he said in the middle of it, we can have what? Peace. Mm. Amen. And we just don't let it get inside us. He is inside us. Mm. So we stay in perfect peace. And if the storm rages, we can bring the Prince of Peace and calm mm. that. As long as we don't get agitated, but that's easier to say for some people if they don't get into this word. Yeah. They've got to get in the word and let the word get in them. And then the word can do its work in them. Yeah. So it's a big encouragement to everyone today. Pick this Bible up, get in the word. This is what, you know, this will set you free. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's not the TV days of our lives, <laughs> you know, the latest Netflix. No, it won't help you. This will definitely help you. Well, it says the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guards our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm. And you know, what we have to do is just keep connecting to him and looking to him in yes. the situation with all the COVID stuff that's yeah. going on at the moment still. I mean, they're changing the rules again oh, today yes. on the 5th of December. <laughs> yes. And I feel like, you know, that peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Yes, you can watch the news and find out what's going on, but, but it's not our guide. Our guide is the Holy Spirit. and that's when we hook into him and have that relationship with him. He gives us that peace Amen. and that understanding and whatever's going on around there doesn't need to affect us. Whatever's going on around, whatever's happening on the news, it can't touch us because mm. we've got the blood of Jesus and we've got the Holy Spirit and we've got the word of God. And we always have hope, always. Yes. Mm. And can I just share one other thing about my, my dad? Um, <clears throat> so when my brother died, my dad had a heart attack. And, you know, yes. again, it was mm. just turned I've upside down. Broken heart. Yeah. And my mum was also, um, you know, very ill at the time. Anyway, my dad had to undergo an operation and um, they put the longest stint in history at that stage in, in his... Um, Probably because he had such a big heart, <laughs> to be quite honest. I'm well, serious about that. And it, and it worked for a while, but after a while it didn't work. And it was scar tissue or something. And, you know, think about this, you know, his son had died. Um, my mum was, you know, really quite mm. ill. And my dad, he had to sleep sitting up because he was just so, mm. it was just so painful. And he was yeah. just devastated. Anyway, so this one night he thought, right, that's it. So he gets out of bed and he says, Lord, 
I'm either going to die or you're going to heal me. And so he just started confessing, by Jesus' stripes I am healed, by Jesus' stripes I am healed, by Jesus' stripes I am healed. And he told me, he said, I don't know how long, how, how long I was there for. I don't know how many times I said it. Maybe a couple of hours or maybe more. He doesn't really know. But what he does know is that there was this warmth just came over him. Wow. Healed. His, um, he was totally healed. He never had angina again wow. after that. How cool is God? And guess where he went? He went down into our community services and what was the most beautiful volunteer down there. He <laughs> packed potatoes. He was the most beautiful of men and he's in eternal life. And, but what a beautiful man. Amen. But to hear him, I, I was there when he said, I, I, I know the testimony. He said, Bob, he said, I was either going to go or I was going to stay. There was no mm. in between. Mm. I was going to be healed and do something for the Lord, or I wanted to go. Mm. And look what happened. Mm. But faith comes by hearing. Mm. Faith for that, when you first say, by his stripes I'm healed, may not be there. Mm. But faith will come mm. as you keep hearing, keep speaking, keep declaring. You know, mm. and, and he did that, How and to powerful. his credit, and it worked. Amen. So powerful. If you work the word, it will work. Mm. Yeah. People mm. give up sometimes too soon. You know, just, oh, it didn't work. Stand your ground. Stand and mm. keep declaring. Mm. You know, God, God will bring you through, but sometimes it's not the way we desire. Yeah. But, you know, it's Ain't that the longer truth? than we thought, you yeah. know, <laughs> harder than we thought, you know. Absolutely. You know, and yet, yeah. but, but, but he, he forges you in the fire. Mm. If you didn't have to go through some hard times to get to where you're going, you'd learn nothing on the journey anyway. Mm. So God allows it knowing he's, he's bringing you through. Mm. Yeah. yeah, But it's a fight. It mm. is a fight. It's a fight of faith. And the good thing is it's a good fight because mm. we always win mm. the fight of faith. Yeah. If you're in a fight and you lose, it can't be faith because mm. faith always, always wins. wins. Mm. Always. It's true. Biblical faith. Amen. Isn't yeah. that awesome? Now, what if you're out there testimony. and you've heard this testimony, powerful <laughs> testimony, and obviously Graham said he's got many other stories where people's lives have been touched and changed. If you're out there right now and you're struggling with mental illness, with depression, or whatever you're going through, I know God can turn all around for good. And right now, just like Graham prayed for that lady's so shoulder and it got totally healed, whatever you're going through, just as Graham prays, sit back and receive. We're going to pray as well, but just sit back and receive and allow the power of God and the love of God to touch your life because he wants you walking in divine health. So Graham, will you just pray for everyone out there mm, right now? Sure. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you for all the blessings that you give us. And sometimes I think about, you know, what's it all about? And very clearly what it's all about is that you want kids, you want us. You don't need us, you don't require us, but you choose us. And not only do you choose us, but you also want to bless us. And so, Lord, your word says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Your word also says that you are the one that heals us. You are the one that delivers us. You are the one that sent your only begotten Son, so that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life and life abundantly. So Father, I just pray that as people listen to this or, or see this, that as they're in that place of difficulty, as they're in that place of challenge, that as they turn to you, Lord God, that you are the one that heals. You are the one that delivers. You are the one that has demonstrated your unfailing love by giving us your only begotten son who took it all on the cross, who took every single disease, every single illness, whether it be physical or emotional or mental, that you, that you, that you paid the price so that we could be free. And that's the truth. And the truth does set us free. And the truth is that by his stripes, we were healed. And that we can, Father, come to you. That we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And we can ask for help in time of need. And that you will give us that help. And we're so grateful, Father. We are so grateful for everything that you do for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, thank Amen. You, Jesus. Thank and you, Father, Lord. I just thank you. If there's anyone out there, Lord, that was like Carol, 
Lord Jesus, like was just talked about, Father, and went through that torment for 18 months, Father, or even struggling with depression or oppression, Father, those ones, Lord Jesus, that are just struggling, Father, I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that your word says that they have the mind of Christ, Lord Amen. Jesus. I thank you right now that every bit of depression and oppression has to leave right now in the name of Jesus, Father, mm. because your love and the blood of Jesus is more powerful than any tormenting or harassment spirit father I just thank you that you give them the peace of God that surpasses all understanding father I thank you that peace Lord Jesus just come into their homes right now Lord Jesus father I thank you Lord that nothing is impossible for you father I thank you that you give them the wisdom Lord Jesus on what words to speak and what scriptures to hang on to father that you give people revelation in this time father even dreams and visions father Amen. that you show them exactly what steps to take take to reach out to others to get out of that situation that they're stuck in father what scriptures to declare father I thank you right now Lord Jesus for that wisdom Lord Jesus you give them that wisdom and they ask for wisdom it says in the Word of God ask and you shall receive Amen. God saying ask me ask me for what you want ask me for what you need because God's going to give you Amen. all the wisdom that you need in your circumstance and situation to walk in the freedom that Christ has for you, the freedom that Christ paid the price for you on the mm. cross. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, and those that are carrying a label that's been placed on you by the world, they've called you manic, bipolar, schizophrenic, um, lots of names. I'm going to cancel that assignment against you because in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is a spiritual world. And some of those voices you hear, like Carol, they are demonic and they are real in the realm of the spirit and you are not crazy. And I declare and decree that you're of sound mind. And Father God, we just thank you that they remove the labels that have been placed so carelessly on your treasures. And Father God, I call them into the gospel. I call them into the truth. And Father, we just thank you. As Graham has prayed, the truth will set you free and you have a sound mind. So come. We invite you to come, come to healing schools, come to church, come and experience the love of the brethren for you. Come and put yourself in the family of God Amen. and let us love on you and let us show you the way home and let us declare and decree with you today that you can be of sound mind yeah. in Jesus' name. And Amen. we thank you for anyone out there in physical pain. We command every bit of pain to leave their body right now in the name of Jesus, that by Jesus' stripes, you, you are, are healed. healed. You have the victory he in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. You know, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus, we're going to say a quick prayer and you can say it after us. It's just asking Jesus into your heart. And from this day on, everything changes. Graham did it. We've I've all done, done it, it and it impacted our lives. So this simple prayer, you can say it after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died on the cross. And you rose again. And you rose again. And from this day on, and from this day on, I'll follow you all the days of my life. I'll follow you all the days of my life. You're my Lord and my Saviour. You're my Lord and my Saviour. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, if you want to know more about the prayer that you just prayed, we have a little book. All you have to do is send us an email or give us a phone call and we'll post that little book out to you. Come on a Sunday, come to our healing workshops throughout the week. We love you and thank you so much for joining us, Great Graham. Pleasure. It's lovely, lovely to have having you, you with thank us. You so much. And Graham awesome. teaches in our Bible college as well. <laughs> yeah, you can sit under his heat teaching. Yeah, and he's at church most Sundays. So you can come and say hi. But yeah. we love you and have, have an awesome week.